Something extraordinary is stirring in the Philippines, and it's about to change everything. Imagine a seamless train journey between bustling Manila and Clark International cities that are technologically avant-garde, yet beautifully green, and island bridges that are tourism game changers. In today's video, we're plunging into the top seven infrastructure projects that will propel the Philippines into an era of unprecedented progress from the futuristic Metro Manila subway to the breathtaking AI city in Clark. Let's begin. According to government sources, Manila, one of the biggest cities in the Philippines, loses about $53 million in potential income daily because of traffic jams. But all these problems are about to disappear as the government embarks on mega projects that will transform the nation. The Metro Manila subway, also called Mega Manila Subway, is an underground rapid transit line in Metro Manila, Philippines. The 36-kilometer line, which consists of 15 stations and runs through six cities, will become the nation's second direct airport rail link after the North-South Commuter Railway, with a branch line to Ninoy Aquino International Airport. This project is so important in the Philippines because of its traffic jams that it's been dubbed the Project of the Century as it's expected to serve 370,000 passengers daily. Although the project began in 2015, it has suffered delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This means it'll be completed, partially opened by 2025, and fully operational by 2029. The expected cost of the project is approximately $7.06 billion. However, this project is not totally bankrolled by the Philippine government. A loan provided by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, covers much of its cost. The project is integrated with a public transit system in Metro Manila, so passengers can take various forms of road transport, such as buses, to reach and exit the station to their various destinations. The rail line is designed to connect with other urban rail transit services in the region, which means riders can transfer to LRT Line 1 and MRT Line 3, among others. Plans for the subway began in 1973, when the Japan International Cooperation Agency developed an urban transport study for the Metro Manila area. Five lines were planned, including lines from Quezon City to Ninoy Aquino International Airport, Manotoc Subdivision to Cainta Rizal, then Sangandaan to Pasay, Quirino Avenue to Roxas Boulevard, and Marulas to Tutuban. There is no doubt that when the project is finished and the rail line becomes operational, it will lessen economic losses caused by traffic congestion and will change the way Filipinos travel forever. Did you know it will also reduce travel time by more than an hour upon completion? The Malolos Clark is a 53.1 kilometer railway line that will seamlessly link Malolos to economically vibrant Clark International Airport in central Luzon and Clark Economic Zone. The project is part of the North-South Commuter Railway project a 163-kilometer suburban network that will connect Clark Pampanga and Calamba City, Laguna. The initiative is a cornerstone within the president's large-scale infrastructure program, known as Build Better More, promoted by the current government. The project is financed through Japan's official development assistance program, facilitated by an extraordinary show of cooperation between Japan and the Philippines, with a loan agreement between the Department of Transportation and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, making it the first airport express railway in the country. When completed, the project will reduce the travel time between Manila and Clark International Airport to an hour. It will also reduce greenhouse emissions by over 60,000 tons per year. The railway is being built as two rail segments, the 51.2-kilometer Malolos-Clark section, connecting Malolos City to the Clark Regional Growth Center and the Clark International Airport, and the 1.9 Blumentritt extension, connecting Solis and the Blumentritt stations in Manila District 1. The MCRP will have seven elevated stations, each featuring two separate platforms with a right-of-way width of 60 meters. Stations will feature elevators and escalators for easy passenger movement and an automatic fare system, which will include ticket vending machines, gates, fare adjustment machines, data collecting machines, and a host of other modern facilities. In addition, multiple electric units will be running on the new line in three categories, commuter train, express commuter train, and airport limited express train. The minimum speed of the trains will be 160 kilometers per hour. Reading about the project makes you want to experience it soon. It's one of the most impressive projects in Southeast Asia. 
The Bulacan Airport, also known as the New Manila Airport Project, is a game changer for the Philippines. The best way to describe this amazing project is to call it world class. The airport will be developed in phases, with an initial capacity of 35 million passengers yearly and a target of 100 million passengers per year once it becomes fully operational. As the single largest investment in the country to date, it represents a long-term solution to traffic congestion in the nation's capital, which has become a significant setback to economic growth and caused many transportation-related challenges in the Philippines. Additionally, the airport will provide safe, convenient, reliable, and efficient air transport services in response to the country's urgent need for a new international gateway with adequate capacity to serve present and future demand. An interesting fact is the property will be built on an over 2,500 hectare property in Bulacan and will include various components such as airfield facilities, terminal building, airport and airline support, access roads, car parks, utilities, and other ancillary facilities to bridge the gap between land and sky with a seamless travel experience. The airport will be accessible for Metro Manila and Luzon provinces through a master-planned infrastructure network. It will surely announce the Philippines on a global stage. The project is a four-lane, 27-meter-long bridge connecting Cebu City to Cordova, Philippines, across the Mactan Canal. The construction, which has a total length of 8.9 kilometers and is supported by pillars approximately 145 meters high, is the longest bridge in the Philippines. The central suspended span is 390 meters long and 51 meters high, allowing boats to navigate the canal. The expressway will feature two lanes in each direction and serve approximately 40,000 cars daily. The project will also include the construction of viaduct approach bridges, causeways, roadways, on and off ramps, secondary bridges, and toll facilities. The link will start at the Cebu South Coastal Road Tunnel in Cebu and end at the Mactan Cebu Circumferential Road in Barangay Pilipog in Cordova. The expressway is expected to improve connectivity and lessen traffic congestion in Metro Cebu. It will also support tourism growth by positioning Cordova as the major gateway for island tourism in Bohol, the Visayas region, and mainland Cebu. It will also reduce the travel time between Cebu City and the Mactan Cebu International Airport to approximately 40 minutes. The project is expected to cost $562 million and be funded by a combination of debt, equity, and internal cash. The Davao Airport Terminal Building is being expanded. Construction work began in March 2022. The project is approximately 40% complete and will increase immensely upon installing new escalators and elevators at the check-in and domestic area. According to the aviation regulator, the airport is one of the busiest in the Philippines, catering to 251 domestic and 11 international flights weekly. With the influx of travelers transiting the airport, the completion of the project is expected to allow the airport to serve and accommodate more passengers at a given time. Besides the main terminal building, there are new support facilities like the administration building, airfield maintenance building, central plant building, and hangar for military and training aircraft. It will also have an 800-slot car parking area and four slots for shuttle buses. The proposed Davao City Expressway will connect the airport to the city through a diamond interchange. The entire project will be completed in 2026. A new four-lane toll road from Santo is 66.7 kilometers long. The project was initiated to improve the transport of goods and services to and from the Southern District of Manila. The expressway will be a central utility corridor carrying various high-voltage overhead power lines and an oil pipeline. Construction is divided into five segments, with one additional extension to Mayao and Lucena on the revised project outline. Beyond steel and concrete, the project will solve one of the biggest problems in Southern Manila, traffic congestion. Decongesting the existing national road between Santo Tomas and Lucena will provide a modern alternate route for passengers from Quezon to the Bicol region. Construction started in 2019, and the expressway will start near the Ayala Greenfield Estate Toll Plaza in Calamba, rather than in Santo Tomas after various project alignment revisions due to right-of-way issues. Each part is two lanes per direction. The expressway is expected to open partially in 2025. Here's the last project on the list, but it's the one that intends to change urban living in the Philippines and possibly all of Southeast Asia. 
New Clark City is a master plan currently being developed on a former military base in the Philippines. The project was initiated by various private sector companies and is expected to be built on a site of over 9,000 hectares. The new city will be home to approximately a million residents and is expected to be the country's first smart, resilient green metropolis. The project aims to address growing environmental problems caused by climate change and establish the city as a global benchmark for sustainable urban planning. The area is intended to be the heart of a vibrant network of connected neighborhood communities driven by principles of environmentalism and sustainability. The city is expected to have exceptional transport connectivity, ease pedestrian movement, and honor the city's surrounding ecology through innovative urban planning and design. The city planners hope to combine a strategic geographical location with a focus on progressive and sustainable planning principles. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and hit notifications so that you'll receive all of our latest updates. I'll be in the comments, looking forward to seeing your thoughts.